In 1989, a small British company called Blue Bear Toys took the world by storm when they released their Polly Pocket range of toys. At the time, this was something new and it felt unique. It, essentially, it appealed to little girls because it was a, a miniature world. What you'd have is a case that had like a certain design on the outside that would open up to reveal this miniature world where tiny little play pieces could be moved around to various different environments. This definitely created a sense of magical engagement from kids, and it wasn't long before they rolled the design out to launch a boys line, which was of course in the range of Mighty Max. This line was a little bit more ambitious, as its focus was of course on more of the gory and action elements that are associated with boys toys. This line was also incredibly successful, uh, both these lines spawned cartoons, and of course the playset started to get bigger and more deluxe as they capitalised on the success of the line. And so, to capitalise on their success, they decided to cast their eyes on other licences that they could acquire to continue building this world. And it wasn't long before they set their sights on Marvel, and in particular, Spider-Man. Because Spider-Man had a cartoon out this time that was very successful and very popular. And so, they got the licence and started making Spider-Man toys. And that is where today's episode of Flashback Fridays begins. Because in the 90s, I had some of these sets. And that is what I want to revisit today. So one of the things that's quite striking about these sets is actually the, the exterior, the case. Um, these look quite nice in their own right. I'm actually surprised by how colourful they are and how, you know, quite nicely detailed they are. They actually stand as little exhibition pieces on in their own right. Another nice little added feature to this line is that they each come with a little bit of a spider web that actually folds out to hold the case up. That's because when you open it, it actually stands vertical. So I actually think this is something maybe that was quite new for this line because usually they lay flat. And of course, there's a little clip at the bottom there that allows you to unfold uh, the little world that is inside. Now, one of the cool things about this line is that it actually draws upon inspiration from particular episodes of the animated series. So in this case, this one is uh, based on the Menace of Mysterio. So it, has, it allows you to play out key scenes from that episode in action figure form. And for such a small space, I always find it surprising by how much they actually manage to cram into these little sets, how much interactivity there actually is. So of course they come with little figures, so here's a little Spider-Man here, and they're very creative with the space that they have, so everything is utilised. So as we can see here, the fold-down flap there is used to create a spider web that he gets trapped in. And there's a cool little mechanism here that allows one of the other action figures to s s spring out on him, uh, so it's obviously a robot werewolf. Um, but it's actually really cool and quite dynamic, and it's a, it's a nice little touch that would have been easy to overlook. Um, and again, the, the, the modelling of this figure is actually really quite nicely done. Obviously, they are a solid piece, they're not articulated in any way, but they're quite faithful to what you see on screen. And of course, there is a little ledge, and there's a nice little background there that's been nicely detailed to recreate some of those sequences. I think one of the standout features of this playset, of course, is the spinning disc that actually uh, is, is quite articulated. Uh, allows it to come out and give it that 3D element, and of course, it spins around as well. Uh, you'll notice these little pegs where Spider-Man's web can attach onto, so essentially Spider-Man can fly. Uh, so it's really cool. So he does come with this uh, plastic web here that he can slide his, his hand into. And then on the other end, there is a peg hole so that the spider web can attach itself to various points on the playset, uh, but I'm going to show it here when it attaches to this uh, this rotating disc. And of course, because the disc can rotate, it means that you're, it creates a sense of action with the figure and a bit more of a, a dynamic moving quality. It just adds a bit more kineticism to the playset. Um, and I think that's really cool that this thing is like really tucked away in there and it really brings the world to life. Like it really, you know, makes it more 3D, makes it much more interactive and it adds a lot more play value to it. And finally, up at the very top here, we can see uh, Mysterio, uh, which is really nice. So he's at his little station there. You can pull him out. And of course, again, they, the paint apps uh, are really, really nice. The color is really faithful to what you see on screen. It's a nice little, little figure in its own right. Um, and of course, there is an action feature here. So again, there is one of those peg holes where we can attach Spidey to the top of the plate set. So he's swinging up to fight Mysterio. And then his little flip trap um, to create this smoke effect that Mysterio has disappeared within the smoke. Um, and I just think that's really cool. Next up, we have what is essentially a Spider-Man head on the outside. But again, very nicely detailed. Nice, nice job they've done there. And of course, it does have the swing out uh, web uh, support there as well, which is great. 
And once you open it up, you realise, of course, that this playset is based on the episode The Sting of the Scorpion, which takes place mostly within Oscorp, inside the sort of industrial radioactive chambers. Again, it comes with a completely unique Spider-Man, so this is a different Spider-Man to the one we saw before. And what's really cool is they've created the vault there, and there's a little clip button, of course, that springs the door open, and out comes the Scorpion. Uh, and again, another nice little model, very nicely painted, fantastic job. The Oscorp... Uh, sign does of course swing across to reveal a data bank and there's nice little details here of where the scorpion has sprayed his acid and melted through the consoles and, and various parts of the play set which I think is really cool. Of course Spider-Man can attach his web to one of those pegs again and again we've got that slight sense of kinetic play there which is really fun. Uh, at the very top of the base we have the water tower which again is soaked in acid uh, and Spider-Man can attach his pegs to that but it can be pulled down as if scorpion has damaged it so much it's fallen and there's a lovely sunset behind it and i think that's again it's recreating the, fi the finale of the episode and i think they've done a great job of that next up we have venom um so obviously this shouldn't become as any surprise that this is of course going to be based on the first season episode uh, the alien costume saga um but i think once again they've done a really nice job of the presentation here the colors are fantastic and i i was a huge venom fan as a kid so this was a particular delight for me You'll notice this time, of course, that there is no uh, web flap there to hold it up, so you can take that as red, that this means that this is going to be a more traditional horizontal set rather than a vertical one. Indeed, when he, you unhook his tongue and open the set up, you get to see uh, the full play set as laid out there. So, again, you get a sense of different variety in this range, and I, I really, really like what they've done. Uh, it does come with a giant uh, web flap there to try and make use of all the play set as best as possible. I don't think that particularly relates to anything in the episode. I think they were just really trying to capitalise on utilising that space for something. Again, we have completely unique figures to this playset and have something of a bit of an upgrade. There's actually articulation in these minifigures. His waist moves and his hands move there. So there's three points of articulation, which is a whole new added dimension. Of course, we get the Venom. So again, another really nice piece uh, and has the same three points of articulation. So this is something of an evolution for the set. And I really like this. This is really cool. Um, and I think it makes up for some of the set's shortcomings. One of the downsides of this set is that it's actually relatively light on features. Um, it does have this tower here, which pulls up, uh, but there's not really great deal you can do with that satellite dish to be honest and it also is aiming to just recreate that uh, rocket launching sequence there so it's quite nice that there's a platform that Venom and Spider-Man can fight on near the rocket um, it does have one central action feature though and that is when you put Venom in the central podium there you can trip a switch and catch him in the webs uh, and that's quite a nice little touch the other action feature is the actual rocket itself and um, there's a little button here that when you press this fires the rocket and that's quite fun Alternatively, of course, you can web Spider-Man to the rocket and then fire it, so essentially Spider-Man <laughs> blasts into space, which is quite cool. Last, but by no means least, we have Kingpin's Crime Central. This isn't based on any particular episode, as the Kingpin's Lair shows up several times in the cartoon series. One of the things that's really lovely about this playset, though, is actually the packaging itself. I love that on the front of it, they've actually opted for artwork. So they've actually recreated the uh, aesthetic of the uh, animated series and created a bit of an exciting uh, action image there. On the back, uh, we get to see an actual photo of the of this playset with some of its various uh, features and of course at the very bottom there we get to see other playsets in the line. Now it's actually a little bit difficult to know where to begin with this playset because as you've seen from the miniature sets uh, they can cram an awful lot of features into a tiny space and of course this is quite a large set so there's a lot to this set to explore but I think its overall look and design is actually really appealing as well. It actually reminds me of the Ghostbusters Fire Station uh, that was released when I was a child, and I had lots of fun with that. Um, and I just think this is a great design. On the one hand, you've got the facade on the outside to create the, the street view, and on the other hand, you've got that sort of cross-section so you can play with the inside. Here we have a closer look so you can see a bit more of what I'm talking about, but there's a lot more detail here. You can see a lot of the brickwork and the paint apps are really nice, creating those light effects. And of course, what could be better than recreating the actual Chrysler building? Something very iconic in its own right. And one of the things I love about this set is the J. Jonah Jameson sign, a kind of you know, 3D sign that kind of sticks out the Daily Bugle sign there again. Just really helps and capture more of the Spider-Man world, which is really fun. Again, we get a brand new Spidey piece, uh, which is great. Uh, it's obviously another unique piece, and of course you can swap and change these Spider-Man across plate sets, so you get a lot of 
different poses, which is great. It does come with webbing, of course, and there are many peg holes on this set where you can you can stick webbing. And I think this is uh, the place where this feature really gets to really capitalise on, on that feature across all the sets, because there's so much space here, uh, and it, it feels quite dynamic. So you can have them webbed to the very top of the Chrysler building, and then rotate that uh, tip right the way around, so it, you get a sense of Spider-Man swinging through the city, which is really cool. And of course, what you can do, of course, is open this set up so that that wall there comes away and you just instantly broaden your uh, environment for playing both outside and inside. One of the action features of this playset is the hook that Spider-Man can web onto and you can actually... Uh, twist it up and down so you can kind of control that crane sort of effect. Uh, so that's a, that's a nice little feature. Of course, you can put other things on the hook, maybe other characters, and reel them in. Of course, we get extra playing pieces as well. In this case, we get the rhino. Again, lovely sculpt, uh, very nice uh, figure indeed. Uh, one of the other features that we have, of course, is one of these firing cannons that the uh, the Kingpin has to blast Spidey when he enters his uh, his domain. Uh, and this is really nicely articulated because, uh, of course, it can swing up and down and it can be uh, swiveled 360 degrees as well, which is a lot of fun. Uh, one of the great features, of course, is there's this little trap door here so that when you press a button at the side, it throws whatever character's there up into the air. And at the exterior, there's a trap door that when you flick the switch, bounces the character away. Another figure piece that we get with this is that of the Kingpin himself. Uh, again, very nicely painted, although not much detail when it comes to the face. Um, one of the fantastic features about this playset, and I absolutely love it, is the use of the lift. Um, so any character you can get in this lift at the very base of the, of the three-tier set, and with the aid of a little winch, uh, can be used to uh, lift the character up. Uh, so you've got, in effect, a working elevator. Um, and I think this is fantastic. I, I really, really love this effect. I think it's brilliant. Uh, and of course, at the very top, we have Kingpin's desk, and it is moulded perfectly to uh, his form, which is brilliant. But before we get to the top level, we actually have the middle tier. Um, now in here we have this uh, giant laser that again is a bit articulated so we can create lots of different action poses there which is cool. Um, and there is this wonderful trap door that when you flick this switch here, the character falls through the floor there. Uh, again, a lovely little extra feature, uh, really making use of the, uh, the size of this playset which is great. But we're not done on this level because... We have the opening door, which is fantastic. Again, seen many times in the cartoon. And this is where our fourth figure piece gets to make an entrance, of course. It is the biggest piece. It is the Spider Slayer. And I love this. I think this is absolutely fantastic. I think it looks really epic. I think it really captures what you see on screen uh, to reenact those sequences. And I, I think this is brilliant. Um, I just think it creates a really great dynamic look to this place set. It just makes it feel you know, much larger than life and it feels genuinely deluxe. And if Spidey can get out of that scrape, he's not out the woods yet because when he gets to the top tier and he confronts Kingpin, Kingpin can utilise his desk there with a little switch to uh, flip him away uh, and himself if he's not careful. <laughs> Another wonderful feature of this set though is having a working light in the ceiling um, of the Kingpin's office. I think that's really, really cool. Uh, there's two batteries uh, that go at the top there, um, and this powers a light both in his office, but also as a searchlight at the top uh, of the Chrysler building. And I, I love that. I think this is just, a, again, one of those wonderful, fantastic little features that just really, you know, enhance the whole play set, the whole play experience. Uh, and it just looks wonderful. But the surprises aren't over yet. Uh, believe it or not, this still has a couple of extra features uh, we've yet to explore. Um, so at the very top, of course, we have this searchlight, but it also pulls out, so that actually doubles as a cannon. Um, we have a seat there, so we can sit uh, the Rhino on top of it, and then we can fire off the very tip of the Chrysler building as a missile. Uh, absolutely brilliant stuff. So there you have it. There is uh, an overview of the toys that I had from this range. Um, I'm not sure if they made any others uh, like this. Uh, I'd be really curious to, to hear your thoughts if you had any and see some pictures. That'd be fantastic. Um, these are the ones I had and it's been absolutely lovely to revisit them again today. I hope you enjoyed the vid. If you did, please do give it a like uh, and remember to subscribe as I'll be posting more videos soon.